Friedberg. I'm going to do a quick lesson on levers. Um, hope you enjoy. I want to start off by talking about how levers work and what exactly they are. And then I'm going to talk about the three different types of levers. And I'm going to give an example of each one to sort of explain how it works. I'm not going to tie in uh, how levers are connected to the human body and how the human body is really just a collection of levers powered by muscles. So, part one. What is a lever? Well, real simple, a lever is just a straight beam is attached to a pivot point. Okay. So if we can draw that diagrammatically by just doing a straight line, which represents the beam, and a little triangle, which represents the pivot point, which is called the fulcrum. So those are really the two physical parts of a lever, a beam and a fulcrum, right? So uh, the word lever is actually from a French word, lever, or however they pronounce it, which means raise, right? And so we use a lever to make it easier to lift something or to move something that we might not be able to move otherwise. So if you think about uh, opening it soda can with a pot top, or opening a bottle with a bottle opener, or moving a refrigerator with a hand truck. Those are all examples of levers in action. Right? So in science, we define a lever as a tool that amplifies, right? Amplify means to increase, like an amplifier amplifies the sound of the guitar. When you plug it in, everyone in the concert hall can hear it. So amplifies means to increase. An input force, right? So it's a tool that amplifies or increases an input force, right? To generate a greater output force, right? And we can summarize this whole long, drawn out explanation, right? Amplifying an input force to generate a greater output force in one simple word, you've probably heard it and used it before. Leverage. Right? So when you have leverage in a situation, there are circumstances that allow you to get extra power out of maybe only a small amount of power or influence that you have. Right? So that's where the word leverage comes from. So let's go back to a moment to our picture of a lever. Right? We have this beam and we have a fulcrum. And really, the fulcrum can live anywhere along the length of the beam. And depending on where the fulcrum is, is how the lever is going to work. So let's take a look at the three different places that we can put the fulcrum and how the lever can work based on those different locations. So there are generally agreed upon three different types of levers, and they're called class one, class two, and class three. Right? One, two, three. I wonder where they got those from. But what we're going to do is I'm going to walk you through the three different types of levers, and then I'm going to do an example of each one that you might have experienced on a daily basis. And then after we're comfortable with the three different types, then we're going to connect it back up to levers in the human body. So let's take a look at the first class, which is called class one. We have our beam. And in a class one lever, the fulcrum is somewhere in between the two endpoints of the beam. Right? It's not at one endpoint, it's not at the other, it's somewhere in between. So uh, why don't we put our fulcrum here for a moment. Right? And then we have to think about the other two important ingredients or the things that come into play when we're using the lever. And that's the work that we're trying to do. Which is often called the resistance, right? Or the load. Right? So you'll often see it referred to as a load, which is a large weight. If you're trying to move a weight or a large object. And other times you'll see it called the resistance if there's something that needs to be moved or pushed out of the way. Right? So the load or the resistance. And then, of course, we have the effort, right? You've got to grab onto something 
part of the lever and use it to move the load or the resistance. So we have a class one lever with the fulcrum in between the resistance and the effort applied. So a great example of that is the top of a soda can. All right, we've got the uh, top of our soda can here. And everybody's probably familiar with this. You have a, something like that, which you need to try and pop down so you can drink your soda. And then right over here, connected to the top of the soda can, there's like a little uh, tab that you get to pull on to open the soda can. Right, and you put your finger there and you pull, and that tab pushes down the opening, and open, you know, pop goes your soda. So if we look closely at this, the tab is our lever. The joint where it's attached to the soda can is the fulcrum. The top that we're trying to pop open is the resistance, right? That's the object that we have to apply the force to. And of course, we use our finger to apply the effort at the other end of the tab. So if we symbol we symbolize the tab as a lever, the fulcrum is where the tab is attached to the soda can. Right? The resistance is the cap, is the pop that we're trying to pop open. And when we apply the effort to the other end of the tab, we're able to use a small amount of strength to pop open a really difficult uh, object. So that's the class one lever. Moving on to the class two lever. Again, we have our beam, right? And we've already got our fulcrum located at some point in between the two ends of the beam. So we're going to put our fulcrum for our class two lever at the very tip of the beam. And that's going to be confusing because you're thinking to yourself, well, a lever is almost like a seesaw. How can you possibly have a seesaw if there's no room for someone to sit on the other end? Well, we can still use this as a lever, and we're going to see how that is in a moment. So in class two lever, the load, or the resistance, is somewhere in the middle of the lever. And on the other end of the lever is the effort that we apply to do the work. So a great example of this would be a wheelbarrow. Right? If you're working in your yard and you're trying to move some bricks around or you're laying some stone and you've got a big stack of bricks and you can't lift them up all by yourself, so you want to use a wheelbarrow, it makes it easier to do that work. So if we take a look at a wheelbarrow, usually there's a wheel, right, which is attached to some sort of long beam. At the end of the beam, maybe there's like a little handle. All right, and then of course somewhere on the wheelbarrow, you got your uh, thing where you put your stuff. And then there's usually a little leg or two where it stands on the ground, right? And so when it's time to do your work, you lift the whole wheelbarrow a little bit off the ground and then you can roll it down the path, right? So if we take a look at the diagram, the fulcrum is the wheel. The load, somewhere in the middle there, is what we're carrying in the wheelbarrow. And of course, when we grab it and lift it up, that's where we apply the effort, right? So that's the class two lever. Let's take a look at the class three lever. Again, in the class 3 lever, the fulcrum is going to be at one end. So, uh, maybe the fulcrum will put it at the opposite end this time. And again, we need to figure out how we can place our load and our effort to make our life easier. So let's take a look at this one. Here, the effort is in the middle, <clears throat> is in the middle of the lever, and the load is on the end, right? The resistance is way out here. So an example of this would be like one of those big earth movers. So let's do a... We've got a little earth mover here. I'm not a very good artist, this will have to do. We got the guy sitting in the window dragging the earth mover. And he's got one of these uh, things on his earth mover. And down here, attached to the big arm of the earth mover, is a little shovel with the teeth on the head. Right? And he's got uh, a cable that goes around here, comes back here. Right, so if we take a closer look at this part of the earth mover, right, maybe there's a big pile of dirt in here. Right. If we take a look at this part of the earth mover, we can see that it's really a lever. Right. There's our beam. Here's the fulcrum, right, because the earth mover is going to lift the dirt out of the ground. So our fulcrum is at the end here. Right, our load is at the very end of the beam. And then, of course, this cable is the work 
we're doing the work to pull the earth mover up out in the air. So our effort is applied in the middle of the lever. Right? So we got our three classes of lever. Class one, the soda can, the bottle opener, the lots of different examples for class one. We got class two, the wheelbarrow, and we got class three, the uh, earth mover. All right. So now let's connect this back to the human body, which is where all the fun in this is all about, right? We have all these long bones in our body, and it turns out that they work just like these long beams and levers. The joints that we have are the hinges or the fulcrum of the levers. All right, so let's take a look at each of these and see if we can find an example from the human body. Okay, so let's take a look at an example of a class one lever in the human body. All right? Here we have your spine made up of lots of little bones connected together in your neck, going all the way down to the bottom of your body. On top of your spine sits your skull, where most of you have a brain. Right? And then, of course, you've got this muscle. Because it's important to remember that it's the muscles in our body that are doing all the work. So at the back of your head, you have a muscle that starts off the, the base of your skull, connects up to the bones in your neck. Right? We'll put the muscle in red, and we'll give it some striations to make it look like a muscle back here. Right? And of course, when you move your head back, you're using that muscle back there to lift your head. Your head is pretty heavy. It's heavier than you think, heavier than it feels. But of course, if you look at this situation, we have a lever, right? Your skull is the lever. The pivot point or the fulcrum is where your skull attaches to your spine, right? The effort applied is by the muscle, which pulls your head back. And then, of course, the load is your head and everything in it, right? So that's a really nice example of your body using its bones as levers to get work done. All right, let's take a look at a class two lever example from the human body. This is where it starts to get a little easier to imagine. Right, if you have your leg, you have your big leg bone at the top, and then you have your little leg bone at the bottom, and you have your heel bone, a bunch of little foot bones, and your toe bones. Right, and every once in a while, maybe you're at the gym and you wanna raise yourself up, right? So. Here we have a situation where you're using your calf muscle. That muscle in the back of your leg. Right? If you're an athlete or a soccer player or a football player, maybe you got a big calf muscle, right? Very easy to see. Right? It's kind of hard to understand how this is working as a lever. Of course, when you raise your heels off the ground by a couple inches, you're really lifting your whole body. Right? So in the case of the class two lever, your foot is the lever. Your toes are the pivot point. Right? The effort is on the far end. And of course, the load is your body. Right? That's what you're lifting up. Right? And it's weighted right in the middle of the foot where your ankle is. Right? So again, class two lever, effort on one end, load in the middle. Fulcrum on the far end, just like the wheelbarrow. And then finally, we have the class three lever. The class three lever is the classic example. You've got your shoulder blade, and your upper arm bone, and your lower arm bone, a bunch of hand bones. Right, maybe you're in the gym one day and you're working out, getting those biceps big, right? To take them to the gun show, right? And of course, you have this muscle, which everyone knows about. It starts up here, connect down to your forearm, right, biceps. And we'll put some muscle striations in there. And maybe we'll put a, a dumbbell in your hand, we'll call it uh, 10 pounds. Right? And you want to raise the dumbbell up, right? So, you use your lever. Your forearm is a lever, right? So here you've got your beam, your fulcrum, which is the joint in your elbow, 
right? And of course, you got your resistance or your load here, your weight that you're lifting. And your muscle, which is grabbing on somewhere around here, is pulling that arm up, right? So we have our effort. And so again, we have our class three lever. The fulcrum on one end, the effort in the middle, and the resistance all the way. All right, so again, we have levers. Talked about the fact that they're a beam with a fulcrum. Helps you move a, uh, a resistance or a load with an effort that you apply. Talked about three types. The class one, the class two, and the class three. And we have an example of each one, right? The class one was the soda can top, also your skull, right? Moving it up and down. The class two lever, the wheelbarrow, and the calf muscle. This one's called the trapezius, by the way. Right? And if you look at the big muscle that connects right up here and goes all the way down to your shoulder. And then, of course, you've got the biceps, right? which tightens and fattens up when you bring your arm up to class three level. Any questions? All right, thank you very much.